In this video, I'm going to explain in easy steps how the DC motor works. But first of all, let's turn it on and see it in action. Let's see what the motor consists of. So I've got two permanent magnets and the north pole of one magnet is here and the south pole of the other magnet is here, which is creating a magnetic field from those permanent magnets from the north pole towards the south pole. Off the camera view, I've got a power supply, which is sending an electric current in through here, in through this brush, in through the commutator, into the coil, which is then going round the coil. And it will go round and round lots of times because there are many turns on the coil. But I'm just going to draw the current going in once and then out through the commutator and this brush and back to the other terminal of the power supply. That electric current will create its own magnetic field, which will interact with the magnetic field from the permanent magnets, producing a force. We can predict the direction of this force using Fleming's left-hand rule. To use Fleming's left-hand rule, you must point your thumb, first finger and second finger of your left hand all at right angles to each other, as shown here. Then your thumb represents the force, your first finger represents the magnetic field, and your second finger represents the current. And I remember this with FBI, where F is the standard symbol for force, B is the standard symbol for magnetic flux density or magnetic field strength, and I is the standard symbol for current. This is easy to remember because you remember FBI for the American Crime Fighting Organization. First of all, let's use Fleming's left-hand rule to predict the direction of the force on this current carrying wire on this side of the coil. To do that, we need to make sure that the first finger is pointing in the direction of the magnetic field, and the second finger is pointing in the direction of the current, which leaves the thumb pointing up, which tells us that the direction of the force on this side of the coil will be up. Let's draw in an arrow to show that. Now let's apply Fleming's left-hand rule to this side of the coil. The magnetic field is again pointing north to south, uh, but this time the current is pointing from front to back, which leaves the thumb pointing downwards, which tells us that the force on this side of the coil is going to be down. Again, let's draw in a force arrow on the other side. So we've worked out that the magnetic field from the current and the magnetic field from the permanent magnets will interact to produce a force up on this side and a force down on this side. And that looks great because equal and opposite forces acting in different places will create a turning moment, which should make our motor turn round in this direction. So let's turn it on and see what happens. Let's watch that again with a little less drawn on. Something's not working quite right. Let's watch it again, but slow down. It's clear that the coil does half a turn round and then comes back and stops in this vertical position. All is good to begin with, with the two forces creating a clockwise turning moment to make it rotate. But when the coil passes the vertical position, then the moment is actually acting in the anti-clockwise direction, which causes it to slow down and come back to the vertical position. Let's stop the video just after it passes the vertical position. So the problem is now that it's creating a turning moment in the anti-clockwise direction, which is going to slow it down and make it come back. But what if we could magically reverse the direction of the forces? Then once again, we would have a clockwise moment, which would keep it turning in the right direction. So how can we achieve this trick of magically reversing the forces? If we think about Fleming's left-hand rule, we've got two options. We can either reverse the direction of the magnetic field, which would make the thumb point in the other direction, or we can reverse the direction of the current, which would make the thumb or the force point in the other direction. Switching the poles of the magnets round is going to be difficult to do automatically. So somehow we need to get the direction of the current to reverse. The clever trick involves this part, which is called the commutator or split ring commutator. And I'm moving this brush so that it touches more in the middle and similarly for the other brush. And if you notice, there is a gap here where there is no metal. And what that means is that when the coil gets to the vertical position, the brush will connect to the other side of the coil. Let's just recap. On this side of the coil, 
We have the magnetic field this way, the current this way, which gives us the force up. But on this side of the coil, the magnetic field goes north to south, the current from front to back, which makes the force go down. That creates the clockwise turning moment and it starts to rotate. Now as it passes the vertical, the clever thing happens. The negative brush, which has been connected to the spotty half of the split ring commutator, which is connected to this side of the coil, transfers over to the other half. And the positive brush, which has been connected to the other half of the commutator, which is connected to this part of the coil, transfers over to the spotty half. And that reverses the direction of the current on each side of the coil. So once again, using Fleming's left hand rule on this side of the coil, magnetic field is north to south, current is front to back, so the force is up. And on this side of the coil, applying Fleming's left hand rule, the magnetic field is north to south, the current is front to back, and so the force is down, which means the turning moment is still clockwise. And so the coil will keep rotating. And this process happens every half revolution. And so the motor keeps turning continuously in the clockwise direction. It's nice to watch on here or on here to see every time the gap comes through and the brushes transfer onto the other half of the commutator. Hopefully you now understand how the DC motor works. So let's look at what you should write as a perfect explanation in your GCSE exam. The current flowing in the coil creates a magnetic field and the magnetic field around the coil <clears throat> interacts with the magnetic field of the permanent magnets to produce a force. In this case, the left-hand side of the coil experiences an upwards force, and the right-hand side of the coil experiences a downwards force because the current is in the opposite direction. Equal forces in opposite directions produce a turning moment, so the coil starts to rotate, in this case, clockwise. Then, critical to explaining how it keeps rotating, every half revolution, the brushes swap from one half of the commutator to the other. And this reverses the direction of the current in the coil every half revolution, which keeps the turning moment in the same direction and keeps the coil rotating. I hope you found this video useful and now have a better understanding of the DC motor.